Welcome to the My Creative Days podcast, where we will talk about all things DIY, home decor, decorating tips, and creating a beautiful home on a budget. I am hoping our time together will spark a creative idea, help you plan your next DIY, or inspire you to finally tackle that project you keep putting off. Grab your favorite cup of motivation and let's chat. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Today we are talking about, I'm answering a question that I get asked a lot and um, it's 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 something that comes up in different uh, waves. I don't know why that word came out, but it's from people that have started flipping furniture, people that are thinking about starting it, um, and they're asking what products they have to have uh, to start flipping furniture to, or to get more involved in flipping furniture to do it more. Like, what do I need to have to start doing this or to keep doing this? When I first started, I had whatever uh, wall paint we had left over from, you know, painting walls in our house. And um, I'm sure I just borrowed my dad's orbital sander. And in the beginning, I bought the cheapest paintbrushes you could buy. And it was a complete nightmare. So I want to start off by saying that because you can start flipping furniture. You can start flipping furniture for free. Um, I talk about that on my website. There are ways to do it for free. You do not need to invest hundreds of dollars into doing this. Um, That's why I love it uh, when people reach out to me and they're like, they want to start it as a side hustle. They want to start it, you know, just to, you know, make some money for vacations or, um, you know, for their daughter's soccer practice or soccer league or, you know, whatever it is. Um, It's one of those those things that it's easy. You don't need a lot of upfront costs to do it, if that makes sense. So um, I'm not going to get into um, how to do it for free, but I am going today to, to, I am going to today talk about the uh, supplies that I definitely think that every furniture flipper should have. Now, granted, if you are just starting out um, inside my furniture flipping course, I basically tell you that, you know, it's important to find these things that you love, these products that you love, um, you know, through trial trial and error, just trying different things to see what you really like to work with. Um, and then I also teach inside my course how you can get these items for free, how you can be paid to use these items, like all the things. I just don't want to overwhelm anybody listening to this podcast that thinks they have to have this list. Like they have to get all of these things. I did write a blog post with all of these things in it. I will link that to the show notes um, to just share my favorite, you know, products that I'm talking about uh, because I hands down, I would recommend these to a beginner, somebody that's been doing it forever, somebody that's just looking for, hey, I need a different paint to try or something. Um, So I would definitely recommend these items. But just know you do not need these things. But these are the things that I have on hand at all times. And but these are things that I, you know, after doing this for more than 20 years that I didn't accumulate at one time, right? Like I wasn't you know, I'd sell a few pieces of furniture and then it was like, okay, now I can get it like that sander I wanted. Or, you know, it just, it grows over time. Just like with any DIY project or any, um, like when you start owning a home, you know, and you have to do, you know, maintenance and things on your home, you just kind of accumulate things. Now we need a mower. Maybe I could use a trimmer, you know, like you just accumulate things over time. And then, you know, your next birthday runs, you know, rolls around and or Christmas and your parents are asking, what do you want for Christmas? I could really use that blender in the kitchen that I don't have. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing with um, with furniture flipping. You will get these things over time, but this I included in this list um, everything because if somebody is you know seasoned and has, has done this a long time, um, they can definitely get something out of it. Maybe it's some of the things that um, maybe more um, somebody that's been doing it for a lot longer may be looking into getting. Um, but yet there's also this you know the few items that I would definitely tell recommend to somebody that's just starting out in this list as well. So to get the links and to just see what I'm talking about, the photos and just the products themselves, make sure that you check out the show notes because like I said, I will link the blog post in there. So um to flip furniture what when I talked about um you can flip furniture for free, um there's definitely you you don't need any money and there is a way to do that. Um, especially if you're just starting out, right? So that's the best way to start. Do it for free. And then, um, you know, as you sell those pieces, 
um, then you can kind <clears> of <throat> put that money aside or save that money up and then to buy some of the products for pieces that you're not going to be able to get for free. So, um, so definitely, you know, you will, you will need to find a primer, a top coat and, um, a paint that you love, right? So, um, those are just super important. You definitely want to find a primer that is going to block, um, you know, stains, odors, smells, um, the, you know, the tannins from coming through, which sometimes it doesn't always work, but, um, you definitely, there is a trick and a way to do that, um, as well, but I'm not going to go off in 14 different directions, but, um, you definitely want to find uh, those products that you love, right. That you keep coming back to, um, there is a line of paint that I love with Dixie Belle. It's their silk line and it is three in one. So it is your primer, your top coat, and your paint all in one jar. Um, perfect for beginners and amazing for people that have done it, you know, been flipping forever. I mean, it cuts down, beginner or not, it cuts down your project time in more than half. It's it, it's unbelievable. I actually, I love that product. Um, and I'm just looking here. Yes. Okay. So I, and I have that linked in the post as well, but if you're somebody that's looking to have the three separate products, I, I recommend that you try a few, try a different, a few different brands that you've heard about, you've seen, you've been thinking about trying, just get the same color in, in the brands. Um, so let's say you have three paint brands, Fusion Mineral Paint, Dixie Bell, and Wise Owl. Um, I'm just throwing out three that came to the top of my, that just came to me right now. Like get, um, you know, they're white colors. They're just stark white colors. And then kind of, you know, use them on some smaller pieces and and just see which one you like. Everybody's different. Everybody's going to like products for different reasons. Um, so I definitely encourage people to um, try out different different lines and different paints. And um, I know like if you go into your Lowe's and Home Depot and they have lines of paint, you know, chalk paint and things that you can definitely try, but just find that one that you really like, uh, you like to use. And if you, I'm going off on a little side thing here. This is what I teach inside my course. Um, this is what I help um, furniture flippers inside my, uh, inside my private community. Um, if you have an online presence at all, if you are sharing your projects and your work, you know, on an Instagram page, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, reach out to some brands and tell them that you're looking for, um, a paint. And I mean, there's a way to go about doing this, but, uh, you know, and see if you can test out their paint and, and share it. So definitely try that. Okay. Um, another thing, like these are some simple, low cost items that I think will just, again, for beginners or people that have been doing it, these are two things that I wish I would have had back in the day. <laughs> So number one is a blue, it's a blue sponge and um, it is the best tool to use uh, for applying a top coat so you don't have brush strokes or anything. I just, I love this thing. You can apply paint with it as well. Um, it's $3. Every time I make an order, I have them in there, uh, but it's just the best tool to have because you don't have brush strokes. It, it just applies the top coat so well. Uh, I just I just love that thing. Another thing is a continuous spray bottle. Um, if you are brushing paint on a piece of furniture, a continuous spray bottle is your friend. Now, some, like that three-in-one paint that I talked about earlier, that is a self-leveling paint, which is another reason why I love it. So you don't want to use water. Um, but a continuous spray bottle, if you're using it um, with other paint brands and things, it's the it's the one thing that I always have on hand that gets rid of uh, brush strokes. It's just sometimes it just helps spread the paint sometimes. Um, so definitely that's something else. It's under ten dollars. I mean, it's not a big investment. Uh, paint brushes. I kind of talked about that <laughs> uh, it, when I started this. Do not buy the cheapest paint brushes that you can find at your you know if you're in a store. Do not do it. I'm telling you from years of experience and wasted money, time, and effort. Do not do it. You need to invest in good paintbrushes. These are things that you're not throwing out, right? So a good paintbrush should last you forever, you know, if you clean it well and maintain it and all of that. So definitely um, invest in some really good paintbrushes. I have um, I have linked uh, a few of my favorites. Um, 
mm-hmm. on on this in this blog post. They're just they're just so good. <laughs> they don't fall apart in your projects. They clean up really well. They last forever. Um, I highly recommend them. And it's not like they're hundreds of dollars by any means, um, but they're just not your dollar ninety nine. You know paintbrush that you see in your local Menards or or, or Lowe's or whatever. I don't even know if you can buy a, a cheap tea, uh, paintbrush for that anymore. But <clears throat> you get the point. Just do not, you need to invest in some good paintbrushes. Okay, another product that I absolutely love is um, this salve from Wise Owl Paint is, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I use it all the time. I've shared many reels and things on Instagram um, sharing how it works and what I do with it. But um, not only for, I mean, it's its amazing for furniture projects and, and for so many reasons, but I use it in my car. I used it to get rid of water ring, rings. I Like there's household uses for it as well. So um, inside drawers, it just, it just makes your drawers look new. Um, their scents, they have a huge list of scents and they are unbelievable. Tobacco flower is my favorite. <laughs> I also like the teak wood and amber, but um, they have lemon and there's so many scents that you can choose from, but it's definitely a game changer. You can use it on metal. You can use it on wood. Um, it, it It's something that just, it changes the look of whatever you're putting on it. Um, I, I actually found a library table in an old garage um, and I I was at a yard sale and I asked the lady, I said, is that table? It was full of stuff, right? She had a bunch of stuff on it. And I said, is that table for sale? And and she's like, uh, uh, yeah, but I just didn't want to get it out, you know, because it was full of stuff. And so Matt and I were like, oh, we can help you, right? This table is amazing. It actually still lives in my office. Um, but all I did was I came home and I cleaned it and then I put the salve on it. And you guys, it's that's on my YouTube channel. You can see the, the change that that salve made alone. Um, so it it's unbelievable. I just love that stuff. I, I sing its praises all the time. Um, another thing, obviously, is your paint. I kind of talked about that. You definitely want to find a paint that that you love. Um, steel wool uh, in different grades, You just to have that on hand. Again, that's not something that is um, a huge... Uh, investment, but it's just kind of one of those things that sometimes you'll, you'll be working on a project and you're like, gee, I I just kind of, I need something else to, um, you know, if you're applying salve with it or if you're, you know, cleaning or just depending on what you're doing, it's just one of those kind of like household things that I always have on hand. Now, um, if you are into refinishing, you definitely want to, um, I say this with, okay, so if I find pieces of furniture that need refinishing where it's like it's really in good condition and I really don't want to put paint on it, but it could be stripped and then, you know, refinished if I'm selling it. It's definitely, it's there's so much work into that. Um, so that's something you have to decide if you're going to do. But if you if you are, and even for some smaller projects, um, you definitely want to find a stripper that you uh, like. Um it's a messy job, but there are other ways to do it. I have found um, a, a stripper that is uh, not as toxic. It, it's toxic. Toxic. Wow, that was a hard word today. Um, it's a spray. It's not like a gel or anything um, that I linked in in the in the post. And you've all seen the oven stripper. Um, hack where you can use that to strip paint. And I actually just did that on some table legs that worked really well. I have not found a piece of furniture, like, you know, like a dresser or something that I would want to try it on yet. Um, I've definitely seen it done. So it's, it's, that's another option, but to have a stripper that you really like is, is a good thing to have on hand. So sanding is something that you have to kind of have, right? So any piece that you're working on, you're going to paint. It does. It, it needs a scuff sand. Um, you should be sanding in between, like you know, your your um, primer and your layers of paint, and before you put the top coat on. Um, so you definitely need different grits of sandpaper. <clears throat> and then, I would recommend. I started out with just an orbital sander. Um, and I would, I mean, that was what I used until the last couple of years. Um, I, I still use it for, for different projects, but um, definitely an orbital sander. You can get like a mouse sander. You know, there's just like the square sanders. Um, but I, I feel like 
it, an orbital sander is going to get the job done, but it's also, it, there's like a learning curve with it because it can go too fast and too hard. And like, you just have to, you just have to work with it and, you know, make sure you don't have too harsh a sandpaper on it, just depending on what you're doing. But you definitely need some kind of sander. Um, I also have like um, this little tiny sander. Um, I, I put in the post as well that it's just great for little areas on pieces. Um, and I, I do have hand sand, sanders. So like, you know, you'll have the, <clears throat> where you put the pad right on the, like the handle. Um, so I definitely will grab those when I'm just have like a little area or not like a huge sanding project to do. So whatever kind of sander you have, it you or you're thinking about, definitely get one. If you're if you're just starting out and you have like a sanding block and you're like, I just need something, you know, I just need to upgrade to something a little more powerful. I would definitely say an orbital sander. Um, and then, uh, if you can, I would say get the serve prep sander. So it is definitely a, um, it's an investment, but it is so worth it ever. That is the sander that I grab all the time now. I use it for everything. Um, it hooks up to a shot, your shop back, all the sanding dust goes into the shop back. It's just, it's unbelievable. I just, I love that sander. So it's, but it is an investment. But this is one of the things where this is how I got new, you know, I upgraded, you know, we upgraded tools and things or like we were finding, we were doing more DIY projects and it was like, oh, we really need a miter saw. Or we really need a table saw or we, you know, those higher price items. So I would just put aside some money every time I sold something. And then, you know, then I could then, uh, you know, when I got the money, then I would buy that new upgraded item. So it's definitely something I would tell you to right now, start putting aside money. If it's $20, everything you sell, you know, every time you sell something, it adds up over time, but um, definitely I would, I would highly recommend it. It is great. Um, another thing that these are just kind of some like lint-free cloths to have on hand uh, for when, you know, just wiping away sanding dust and those kinds of things. Restore a finish is a, another product uh, that kind of restores wood. So if you have scratches in wood, um, those kinds of things, that is a product that I always have on hand. Tack cloths, you can have those on hand as well to, you know, wipe away um, sanding dust. Uh, furniture movers that are on wheels, those are so handy, especially if you're flipping, you know, if you, you don't have somebody else to help you, you know, move pieces around as you're, you're painting them or, you know, spraying them, whatever you're doing. Um, they're just handy to have. You just put the piece of furniture on these wheels and then you can move it around as you need it. So that that's another kind of handy thing. Definitely not a need right in the beginning, but something they're not a huge, it's not like um, a huge investment, you know, just something to think about, um, especially if you're doing it on your own. Uh, so then it's just easier for you to move. Um, I also have this chair that I got. Actually, I got Matt this chair that's on wheels um, for inside the garage. You guys, I use it more than he does, I feel like, because I'm always, you know, I'm painting furniture and it's just, it's so nice. It's got like a tray on it so I can keep my paint supplies and things that I need, you know, my cloths or whatever I'm using um, right on that tray. I don't lose them. And then I can just wheel around the piece. And um, I love this chair. <laughs> So I added that to the list just because it's just, it's one of those things, again, it is definitely not a need, but it, it's so nice. Once you have it, it is so, so nice to have. So, okay, I hope that list is not overwhelming. That's not why I did it. I do get a lot of questions about what products do you recommend? What products should I have? What products should I not waste my time with? You know, questions along those lines. So I wanted to put this post together so it kind of had everything that I would, I would, um, recommend to anybody who is starting to flip has been flipping. Um, these are things that I will not, um, live without now. I say that now because I've been doing this for more than 20 years. Um, so like the chair on the wheels, I will not live without that, but it's not something that I feel like a beginner, you know, has to have, if that makes sense. Um, the serve prep sander, I will not live without that thing. Now, not every beginner, you know, it, because it is an investment, you know, needs to go out and get that. There are other sanders available. It's just once you start using that serve prep, you will be like, oh my goodness, where has this been all my life? So um, these are definitely things that I will not live without. I will always use. Um, and so, and I will always recommend them. So, 
Um, let me know if this is helpful. Um, email me, lindsay at mycreativedays.com. If you have any other questions along this li- these lines or if I need to go into, if I need to explain something better, again, I will link this blog post um, in the show notes so that you can refer to it. You can find the links and read about read more about the products. Um, but I do love to hear from you. So if there's a podcast or if there's like a topic or a question or um, all of these blog posts, my content comes from things that I'm asked about most often. Um, same with the podcast. I would love to hear from you. So if there's something you would like answered or would like to know, it doesn't even have to be about furniture flipping. It can be about DIY, my life, business, whatever it is. It, it There's nothing off the table. So definitely email me at lindsay at mycreativedays.com or reach out to me on Instagram at mycreativedays. Message me there and I would love to hear from you. So until next time, I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you real soon. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'm grateful that you tune in every week and that you share the show with your family and friends. I love having creative chit chats with you. And my hope is that this podcast will inspire you to try a new project, start a DIY that you've been putting off and decorate your home exactly how you want it. There are a few ways you can help us with the podcast. Follow the podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you could take a few minutes to leave the podcast a review, that would help us so, so much. Again, thank you for being here. And I look forward to our chat next week. Bye-bye.